What's up, everybody? It's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another episode of Ask Brand Man, where I answer your questions from the comment section below every Wednesday. And you guys have been coming with some great questions lately. I really appreciate it because it's really been more, more fun to answer these questions. Um, and actually, there's some questions that I really want to get deep into, but I don't have time to do that today. It's the network. So I'm going to run through some of these questions, starting with Leisure Loves Questions, Feature FM, Toned In, which one is better? All right. So for those of you who don't know, Tone In and Feature FM, most likely Leisure Love is referring to their smart link capabilities. That's when, hey, you lead somebody to your page, bam, YouTube, Apple, uh, Amazon Music. Which one do I click? Spotify, where, where do I click over to listen to, to music? That's what that is. Now, this is how I look at that. Number one, Feature FM and Tone In have a lot of capabilities, a lot, right? The only thing that matters though for most artists, 99% of the artists out there, 99% of the time is going to be just a simple landing page feature and a pre-save feature. And the pre-save feature isn't even going to matter all that much for the most part because everybody's not going to be running pre-saves every single time they release a track, right? Um, a lot of these features are really irrelevant unless you, unless you have a certain level of fan base, unless you're going to really commit to a strategy, not just a small level tactic where, hey, let's use a pre-save this time. Hey, let's try some hyper follow one time. None of that stuff matters, but I'll get into that. Before I get into that, we use Toned In at our marketing agency. At Contra Brand Agency, we use Toned In. So that tells you a lot about how we feel about Toned In. Both Toned In and Feature FM have some free tiers. Um, I never use their smart link but I did use a lot of the other things um, in terms of their advertising platform back in the day, SoundCloud, Deezer. I used their advertising platforms a couple of years ago. Haven't used it recently. Toned in, what we like about it is really the entire user experience, working with the team, it makes it easier for us to read and, and to share the campaigns and keep track of everything. So look, I'll end it with this. Two things matter. One, the basic feature of actually being able to click over to a landing page they all have it. Select Spotify, YouTube, etc. And then, yeah, if you want to use a pre-save, but that's rare. Really, it's only one thing, that. And then the other thing is simply the insights. What is your ability to read data? So on Toned In, I can tell you, we can see how many people viewed the page, how many people clicked through, how many people um are most like how many people are converting over to whatever the country is, right? The top countries and also the top cities, right? That basic information, I haven't really seen too much more detail than, than that in any of these smart link pro platforms. They're all, it's a pretty, it's, it's a pretty competitive space and everything is pretty simple to achieve technology, uh, technologically. So you don't find huge differentiations, which is why they offer all these other features and hyper follows and and ad platform and all these other things right so the thing that you need though right is just those things that i mentioned now with that being said the reason i didn't spend any time going into feature fm for this video outside of what i already knew is because i'm focused on what we're using and i don't say that um i don't even say that like from a cocky way i say that from a sense of that's what I what more artists need to do. What are the features that you need? Don't pay attention to the rest of this stuff, right? And don't even spend time trying to get excited about these tools and all these different features that they, they pop up with because it's, it's a distraction. As I'm telling you, again, all the, the, the hundreds of artists we're working with, the, the hundreds of thousand dollars being spent on our marketing campaigns, most of these campaigns are just using the basic landing page. They all got that feature, right? And again, as a, a artist that's uh, just, if it's just you, Toned In has a free tier. Feature FM has a free tier. Try them both out. One song to one song. See how you like it. Again, we use Toned In. But what, what gets, where artists get it messed up is getting focused on these tools and the tactics versus having any kind of strategy. And it don't work like that, man. It does not work like that because artists will say, oh, I want to do this pre-save campaign and expect the pre-save to be the, the, the game breaker for them. It's not the pre-save in itself. It's how do you pair that with your strategy to amplify, right? It doesn't do anything in and of itself. Having a hyper follow and, have, and the ability to c collect emails doesn't really change the game for you unless you create a strategy around it 
that uses that function, right? And so there's so many things, right? Facebook, it's the same thing with Facebook ads, influencer campaigns. All of these things are just different tools in the tool shed, but it, none of them individually will be the game that break you, right? <laughs> the, the game that break you, the game breaker. I don't know, I've never said that before. The game that break you, but the, the, the truth is, it's the strategy behind it, right? So what are you doing? What is the plan around it? And how are you approaching it? I'll do something deeper in that where I might provide some analogies for you, but just know that it's the tactics are where people get lost, right? I try this tool, this tool, this tool, this tool versus building out a strategy and finding the tools that fit within that strategy. That's the approach you should be taking. All right. So that's my answer to, to, uh, to leisure love. And also when it comes to a lot of these questions about reviews on platforms, for the most part, I'm not going to answer to uh, too many of them because I'm not out here trying to be an expert on the platforms, like which, which who has the better this or that of the same thing. I'm trying to figure out the best tactics to build out certain artists based on their particular strategy. Right. And that's what we do. And how do we brand? Right. So at the agency, we're not testing and playing with a lot of different tools. We're testing tools within a strategy for an artist to grow. All right. And what makes sense for that particular campaign. Last thing, it's always going to be custom to you, though, at the end of the day. All right. Now, Drake Taylor says, help. Backstory. About two days ago, I thought I was paying for an organic promo service, but it turns out it's just bots. Dang. They won't cancel my order. So far, nothing has been removed, but will my profile be shadow banned or will anything bad happen? I don't know what platform you're talking about, Drake. All right. Drake Taylor, that's. Shout out to you, because my last name is Taylor. So shout out to you. Now, all right, look at it this way, though. I'll go Spotify, then I'll go Instagram. That's likely the two platforms. It's one or the other. If, it, if it's the Spotify um, thing, there's a pretty decent chance, depending on how much of it has happened, um, how many bots you have, there's a pretty decent chance that you could get banned. Um, definitely those streams will be wiped away at some point. Um, there's a good chance of that. Now, would it happen immediately? Most likely not, but Spotify tends to do these. It's, it seems random to us on the outside, but I'm sure there's a method to the madness on when they decide to do a clean sweep. So you might be good for a year. And the next thing you know, when they do their purge, then you know, you're know you prone to have a song possibly taken down. You got to put it back up. My question to you, Drake, is if you don't want to be affected by that, think about how many, how many streams you already have, right? How much action do you have on that, that track? Right. Or your, your music as a whole. Or did you do follows? Because if you don't have that much going on, it's, maybe it's worth taking it down, putting it back up and not having to worry about it and just act, act right. Um, you know, going into the future. Now, flip it. Instagram. Now, if it's Instagram, there's a lot less chance of you being banned, per se, um, especially if it's just this one off campaign. But what I will say is you got to get rid of that because either way it goes. Messing around with fake streams completely makes you delusional. You have no idea what the reality is when you decide to launch something. You Your reference points are all messed up, right? So you don't want to get caught having to chase and create an image that, that adds up to something that's not true. What you can do is, one, well, all right, I'll say, I'll say this. One, just stop, and from now on, Build out every build out your campaigns, run run a campaign specifically to your Instagram, um, to your Insta, to your Instagram profile and start building up follows that way and start taking those people that came in that period of time, just start taking them out for your profile. Just um, block them. All right. If you block them, get them off you. It's a one time purge situation where you do it yourself, but you don't have to worry about it in the future. So you're now you can start to have proper context. But I'm assuming that you're talking about Spotify. Right. And also because you're in this situation, I'm not going to it doesn't have to be too nuanced because I'm assuming you also don't really have that many followers. Uh, I wish uh, you guys will add more context and be more specific when you ask these questions, because the more you ask, the deeper you go, I can go. Um, but so if you need to ask another question, um, Drake, and go deeper into that. Next, Trayvo. 
When you say using Facebook, do you mean transferring views to a YouTube video using Facebook ads or actually posting it on Facebook itself? Now, what Trevo was referring to is I had a whole video where I was talking about which platform is the best in terms of music video marketing. And I didn't say YouTube, the actual one, and YouTube and Google ads, I was saying that Facebook and Facebook ads is the best, all right? So to clarify, which I appreciate Trevo, no, not posting um, and on Facebook and to link over to YouTube and run that ad trying to get people to go over to a YouTube ad, I mean to a YouTube video, I'm talking about posting natively on Facebook and running that, that post as a video view campaign, all right? That is the absolute best when it comes to building the best awareness and warm audience for your music video. Now, why is that? To walk through the logic again, Facebook allows for video view campaigns where you are optimizing for the people who are most likely to watch the video, right? Because they're the people who just send, tend to watch videos, period. Facebook has that data. They also know who people who are more likely to click through a traffic ad, right? Some people who are likely to click aren't necessarily likely to watch a video. And what happens, right? As you, you watch that video, Right. You also start to be able to have more data where they start to optimize for people who are more likely to watch more of the video or to watch as much of the video. Right. So that's something you don't have on YouTube. YouTube is you have your audience and it shows to everybody in that particular category. If you're doing a placement campaign. So all the targeting is on you. They don't know. They don't take in much about the end user. It's about saying, yo, I'm going to be. I'm gonna be on aisle three, right? Because that's where all the canned food is and I have canned beans. So when somebody comes looking for canned food, I'm gonna be around the rest of the canned food. That's what, what, what a YouTube ad is when you're doing placements. You're just in the way, right? So I wanna, I feel like my music is like Gucci Mane. I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna advertise on a Gucci Mane video and now I'm in the way they gotta hear me before they hear the Gucci Mane song. Right. But it's not going to learn and better target anybody. The most you can do is the optimization of saying, yo, out of these placements, which ones perform best and then start to delete the ones that didn't perform right. And then start to um, find other ones more like the ones that perform well. Right. That's what YouTube comes down to for most people. Getting into, into the discovery ads, it becomes too more too expensive for most artists um, starting out and. Let me think about, is there anything else with YouTube ads? Yeah, and the affinity ads are definitely too expensive for artists um, starting out. It, do, it, it doesn't work. The placements is gonna, it works, but it's not for what most artists are, are dealing with. Placements is gonna be your best, and that's simply, again, being placed in a certain position where you are in the way they have to encounter you and whether they like you or not, it doesn't say, oh snap, I wanna show to that person who came down this aisle or that person, I'm just showing to every single pe person that came down that aisle. Other way around, Facebook says, ooh, I'm gonna start here, but then I'm going to begin to only show to people who are responding to it a certain way. And first and foremost, I'm going to show to people from the very beginning, people who are most likely to view my video. So when I'm talking about entire full music videos, Facebook, because you can start getting people to optimize to watch a two minute full video, a three minute full video. And that, like when we're talking about experiencing your brand, it's nothing like that. I know a lot of people don't necessarily love that because Facebook isn't the platform that most people like to be on. However, just technically, that alone is the best. Right, for building out your brand and then you can get into the retargeting and all those things saying, yo, I'm going to retarget somebody who watched 90, well, not 90, 75% of this, 95% of it, they do allow um, 95, which usually is, we use 75 or 50%. But that experience is, is something that you can't beat, right? So that's what I'm talking about when I'm referring to why Facebook ads is so powerful. That's a native post. All right, and you're running it, you're not trying to push them over to any platform, not even trying to push them over to a smart link. You might have it included, but that's not necessarily the goal. All right, now, I wanted to change my artist name for a long time on DistroKid, but I'm afraid that I would not be able to re-upload my older songs to my new artist name page. Is there any, is there a way to figure it out? 
yeah, that question, um, Tala Eunice, again, I'm not an expert in distro kit and the logistics of everything they do on the back end. Um, but what I can say is <sighs> depend on how it depends on how much music you have out and how many followers and all that activity. If it's not that much, then you might want to just bite the bullet, take a small back step to start where you, you're, uh, where you want to, I mean, start with a new name, but at the same time, you got to realize it is very hard when it comes to getting the updates. So you want to change your name as little as possible, right? You might have to create some alternate names on the side, right? And you brand yourself, but they still know to find you by this one core name. Or for many of you guys who are still in experimental phase, maybe consider even just staying on an audio Mac or a a uh, SoundCloud for a while before you commit to a platform like Apple Music and Spotify. All right, but just know it's not it's not easy. They don't make it really easy. Um, and each streaming platform has its own thing, their own rules. Even DistroKid does say that. So it's not a DistroKid thing more than anything. It's a Spotify, Apple thing. All right. Now let me see. Last question. Actually, let's do a comment. What's the comment of the day? Da -da, da -da -da -da. Bam. Unders. Unders said, congrats on 100K subscribers. Appreciate that, Unders. Number two, though. He said, Spotify is the tip, not the wage. Now, this video was under Corey's video um, where he was just talking about how much artists get paid um on spotify the numbers and all that stuff and i love this philosophy in terms of how you look at spotify yes i do know artists who are making most of their money or their consistent money from spotify because they have 300,000 400,000 streams a month and they don't necessarily have a lot of income coming from somewhere else so i do know some artists that are like that making two thousand three thousand dollars a month off of spotify consistently and that's their main thing however long term streaming platforms should be the tip it should be the extra for their experience right and i don't mean should be philosophically i'm in terms of that's the way it should be i get that y'all don't like what they pay y'all right but i'm saying that's how you have to approach it based on how the game is working right now and look at your main or look at other avenues in terms of making the wage making your main income right because there's so many opportunities whether it's merch whether it's concerts or this live online experience there's so many ways we can get into that in another video but unders once again i appreciate that uh comment so many artists need to flip to that that's the switch to that spotify is just a tip you can't rely on these streaming platforms and you just call that the cost of the game in the district um because of, you're paying for the distribution that goes on along with it all right they got the audience and they're taxing you to get to that audience one way or another not the perfect analogy but that's what's happening and you know that's the cost of building your fan base and when you get more power you can start influencing your fans in more high margin directions all right so that's it for this video keep asking questions i really appreciate you guys like i said there's there's gonna be some really dope and detailed uh episodes coming up i'm starting to get a little bit more time in my schedule so i wanted to save some of these questions i, I keep i appreciate these questions keep asking questions if you like this video go ahead the like button if you like it you might as well share it. and if you're not subscribed you know what to do hit that subscribe button